Okay, good morning. So I am Laura Bender. If we haven't had the opportunity of chatting yet or having the opportunity to practice together. Um, and today's class is going to be um, chair yoga, obviously. There's a chair present um, behind me and um, it's going to involve some yin poses. So if you're not familiar with yin, um, to kind of give you a little background, so the poses are held uh, three to five minutes. Uh, we wanna have the, our muscles cold. We don't wanna have, like we just worked out and then we're doing this. Um, so we wanna have the muscles cold in this position. And we're gonna utilize the chair for part of the practice actually seated in it. And then we might actually use it then for um, a prop in the port. So we're gonna start seated using the chair. And then we're also gonna do some seated postures on the floor or some postures that are on the floor. Um, so for this practice today, I grabbed a couple blankets, um, a bolster, blocks. Um, again, just kind of use what you have. You don't have to use props for yin practice at all. Um, I just prefer just for myself, cause I, this is, you know, I know my own body. Um, but again, just kind of feel it out. You know, maybe your edge doesn't require you to use a blanket or a block or whatever. Um, so I want you to feel comfortable in your own body and just kind of deciding what you want to do for your practice. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to make my way over to the chair. And we're going to start today in a seated position in the chair. And if you have blocks, go ahead and grab them. And there's a couple different options you can do with these blocks. Um, I'm actually just going to do, let's see, I'm going to have them there. Actually, that's all I'm going to use is the box, I think. Um, so I'm going to place them in front of me. And um, we're going to start with like a little bit of a hip opener. Um, so I'm going to take my right ankle and just start by crossing it over my left thigh. Um, now you notice that I have my foot active here. Um, we do want to have some, um, you know, some flexion in this foot, some flexing in the foot, just to kind of protect our joints. Um, but it doesn't have to be a complete and utter engagement. <clears throat> All right, and then what I want to do from here, maybe I will use actually the prop as well. Actually, I'm going to take my bolster also. And again, this is not necessary, but it's just what will make me feel a little more comfortable since we're going to be here for a few minutes. Basically, from here, I'm just going to fold forward. So if you can just reach the blocks on the ground, uh, go ahead and use those. If not, maybe, again, you can create something similar to this. If you have a cushion or something, you can um, maybe stack it on top of the blocks or uh, use it in some way to um, fold forward. So we're gonna work on a little hip opening, a little stretching of the hip flexor today to start. And again, we'll just be here for a few minutes. So get comfortable. And just kind of focus on our breath. Maybe this is what's gonna bring us to our edge today, just allowing the flow of the breath. Onion is meant to have that little bit of uncomfortable sensations, and this is our opportunity to work through those uncomfortable sensations. So just, again, listen to your body and maybe 
Again, if you're here, maybe you find yourself removing the bolster or moving extra props as we are here for this few moment, for these few moments. All right, so if you're on um, any kind of props like the block or if you have this stacked up like I do, um, your bolster, go ahead and kind of gently bring yourself up to back to your seat. We're gonna keep the ankle crossed over here and we're gonna do a little twist, um, a little bit of movement of the spine just kind of in between to break it up. So keeping again your ankle crossed, let's go ahead and take our twist over to the left side. So you may even wanna use your Place your hand on your foot to kind of use as a, um, I guess normally we would place our hand on our knee. So maybe this is going to be our, where we're going to place the hand on our foot. And taking your twist to the right, left hand's going to come, or excuse me, left. And your left hand's going to come um, to the back of the chair. All right, then go ahead and slowly release that. We're gonna take now the twist over to the right side. So bringing the left hand to the knee and just allowing the body to twist over to the right as the right arm comes to the back of your seat. And gaze can follow just as far as you need it to go. Maybe it's going to just be over to the right side, or maybe you have it over the shoulder. Again, just kind of listen in and see where you go. All right, go ahead and come back to center. Now we're going to take our leg and actually cross the leg over. So we're sitting kind of fancy now. And um, we're going to come into like a deeper seated 
twist here. And what I would like you to do is we're actually going to twist over to the right side. So just kind of bringing in the hand to the left leg. And we'll be here actually for a couple minutes. So just kind of find a comfortable space. All right, let's go ahead and bring yourselves back to center. Again, start by a cross in the leg, bringing the legs just down to the ground, back to that neutral position. All right, and then when you're ready, and I did have to adjust this in front of me, so yeah, I might be okay still. Um, so I'm gonna take my left ankle and cross it over my right. Now, like I usually see in these classes, sometimes, we feel different on both sides, either side of the body. Like there's just differences in the way our body feels on the left and right side. Just kind of take note of it. And um, again, continue your practice however you see fit. If you feel more open on one side um, or if you feel more closed, just again, just kind of work with your body and listen, tune in. All right, so once again, you can stay here if you want. This is also another option. Um, but if you want to take a little further, which I'm going to demonstrate again, is just kind of folding forward a little bit. Again, I'm using the both the blocks and the bolster. I'm going to move it just a little closer. I did have to move it. All right, just a little bit closer so I can kind of bring my hands here.
Again, allowing your breath to guide you a little deeper into the pose if it feels okay in the body. Okay, and depending on what props you have in front of you, if you're using any, I'm going to go ahead and walk yourself back up. Again, we're going to keep the ankle crossed over, and I am going to move this out of the way just for um, temporarily, because I won't use it, be using it for this until the next uh, couple poses after our twists. So we're going to start again with those twists, so keeping the ankle crossed. I'm just going to bring my left hand to my, right, my left foot, and then bring the right hand behind me. Just kind of pausing here for that twist. So this foot's kind of creating some resistance. That's the word I was looking for earlier. It's finding that resistance here to help us with the integrity of the twist. So we're not moving from the hips here, we're moving with the spine. All right, go ahead and release it. Bring it to the opposite side. So this time my right hand's gonna come to my left knee 
And we're gonna twist to the left side. So the left arm can just make its way to the back of the chair. Okay, let's go ahead and release. All right, so crossing the leg over a little deeper. Coming into this fancy seat here. Let's go ahead and take again a twist over to the left side. So bringing the hand again, maybe behind the chair. And we're going to take the left, excuse me, right arm to the knee. And as we twist over to the left side. Like it will be here for a couple minutes, so just kind of find that nice twisting of the spine. All right, just a couple more breaths. All right, go ahead and gently bring yourself back to center. Take a moment, and, oops, cross your legs, come on back to that neutral position with the body, with the spine. All right, so I'm going to do one more seated in the chair, and I'm going to take my blocks. 
and just kind of bring them at the lower setting and place my feet on top. Um, and this is where I'm going to use that bolster again. And it's completely up to you on if you need to even use the bolster. You don't have to. Um, but we're going to do a variation of a caterpillar pose, um, which is basically just a forward fold. Normally, we have our legs out straight, and I'm actually going to move the blocks a little bit so I can do that. So that my legs are more out in front of me. I do have a slight bend in the knee just because of the fact that we've been sitting in a chair. I mean, you can't not do that. Um, and you can have the bolster really in any position. If you wanted to hold it this way, you can. I'm actually just going to place it this way um, across my lap. And then we're going to spend the next few minutes here. So just again, kind of folding in. And you can see here, if you have a blanket, I can, I mean, I could always grab those blankets, but I'm just going to use my hands and maybe create a little shelf with your hands for your forehead, or maybe even take fists and just stack them to see if your forehead to rest on something.
All right, let's go ahead and slowly bring ourselves up from our forward fold. Excellent. So we are actually done with the seated portion of the um, chair again. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my legs off of the blocks and come down to the mat. Now I'm going to move the chair slightly out of the way just so I can um, do these next couple poses. We will use it though for um, some of the postures, but not really the, too many more. Okay, so to start, um, I'm going to grab one of my blankets here that I have to the side. And I'm just going to bring it so that I have um, just some padding for my knees. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, but again, this is something that's more comfortable for my body. All right, I'm going to come down to my hands and my knees. And I'm going to tuck my toes. So I have my toes just kind of gently tucked here. Move this off to the side so you can see. And I'm going to start to walk my hands forward coming into a melted heart. Now, head again can come down to your uh, mat, or if you have a block here, if you have trouble, um, or even another blanket if you prefer. Um, that is, keep the, lift, the hips lifted. And you know, this feels good on the feet, so if you want to, again, keep them um, tucked as well. I will just be here for a few minutes. Allowing our heart and our belly to melt down into the mat. Okay, so again, just kind of carefully walk yourself back towards your heels so that you're more in a tabletop position. Okay, and now, next up again, I'm going to use, utilize this blanket again. I'm just going to shift it a little bit. And I am going to use my bolster for this as well. And now, again, bolster is not required, um, but I am going to show a more supported variation of frog. So I utilize the, I use the blanket more or less to kind of allow my knees to, and my hips to open up. Um, and normally I would probably, I probably would probably use a bolster as well for this. But um, in this case, it's going to add a little extra support. Um, so starting again in the tabletop pose, and you can kind of bring your hands to either side of the bolster. I'm just going to start to move my knees out to the edge of my blanket. And you can, of course, extend the blanket. Now, notice I've also 
turn my feet out into that frog pose, frog position. And I'm gonna use the bolster here just to support my upper body. Now again, um, if you wanted to extend the blanket out a little further, you can, and maybe this is something you're working towards um, in your practice. So just again, take the, take the legs as wide as you can. And maybe you're gonna work towards a little wider each time. Um, so just again, kind of finding maybe a cheek to your bolster. Now, if you didn't wanna do this at all, you can just completely come down to some other props or down to the mat. But again, I'm, I'm just kind of demonstrating a supportive variation of this pose. So here we go.
All right, ever so gently, just start to, I'm gonna put my glasses on first. <laughs> All right, and maybe place your hands to your sides if you, depending if you're using the bolster or not, and pressing yourself up and then moving yourself back to that tabletop pose. Excellent. All right, so hope everyone enjoyed that. I'm going to come to a seated position here. And I will use the chair for this next one. Again, this isn't required, but if you prefer it, um, great. And this is where also, you know, depending on where, if you have other blankets or something, where you want to use them. Um, I'm going to actually stay seated on one and then bring another one to the chair. I'm just going to place it in any position that's comfortable for it because we're going to rest. I'm going to rest my head on it. Um, and like I mentioned, um, this isn't required. So if you'd rather fold forward and maybe not use anything to rest your head on, that's fine. Or if you want to just use another variation where you're placing some blocks to fold in, you can do that also. But since we have the chair here, why not, right? So bring it a little closer. We're going to, again, bring the sole of the feet together. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, we're going to come into a butterfly pose. So sitting up nice and tall. Maybe hands um, for the moment are just on your ankles. And this is could be where we're going to be right now. Maybe you don't want to fold into this. Or maybe you're going to work into a fold. That's fine too. Um, so starting here. Uh, but if you want to, allow, allow your heart to lead you forward. And again, maybe you're using blocks or this chair that's here. I'm just going to rest my forehead down. Let's see. Okay. And here goes the timer. All right. And this could be something, too, where maybe you're adjusting where the chair is. You kind of, again, allow yourself to fold in a little deeper. This is kind of different for you. And I actually have cold feet right now, so I'm going to wrap my fingertips around the tops of my feet. So that's totally up to you as well. Maybe you also have cold feet or you have socks on. Maybe you're, I should have done that, but that's okay.
Okay, go ahead and gently bring yourself up. Forehead maybe comes up if you were folded in. And then here we go. So we're going to take our legs now and extend them out into a straddle or fan pose. And again, using the same idea here, we're just going to allow our bodies to this time we actually will fold forward. So again, this could be up to you how far you want to actually fold. Maybe you're not even using the chair, so you want a little bit more. Or again, I'm going to actually demonstrate this using the chair today. So again, I'm allowing my heart to lead me forward as I rest the forehead down.
All right, so go ahead and go start to walk yourself back if you're folded in. Perfect. Okay, so we just have one more pose before we come into our Shavasana. So I'm, I'm going to de demonstrate this, how I'm going to prop myself up. This might vary from person to person. I'm going to take one of my blocks and also be gentle here with your legs, just kind of taking your time and bringing them to a knee, like a bent knee position and maybe just kind of moving it to, to one side. Even windshield wipering them feels good there as well. And I'm going to move this for the time being kind of a little further away. All right. And I am going to use a blanket as well. And I'm going to unfold it. Um, let's see. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to unfold it so it's lengthwise, almost like the width, length of my mat. But um, since I'm not using the whole mat, and then maybe just kind of a little additional fold there too, depending on how much you need. Okay, and I'm going to move this forward. I'm going to place my block here and the bolster on top. So I'm putting this little ramp for myself, and I might have to move this just a teeny bit. There we go. All right, so we're going to come into our final pose, which is saddle pose. And it's kind of it kind of sounds like it would exactly how it is. It's how it sounds, I guess, saying the words. <laughs> Um, so I want to kind of come to a kneeling position. I'm just using this chair just to kind of prop myself. Put my knees a little closer. And I'm going to walk my heels along the edge. And I want to sit just on the very, very edge of my bolster. So I'm like right here. And maybe this is where we stay. Maybe we, and actually I'm going to take it further, like a little bit further. I'm going to take it back and recline myself. So this is maybe where I'm going to stay today. Or again, if you want to take it maybe a little bit more, I'm going to scoop a little closer to the edge. Maybe you want to lay down on the bolster. And again, maybe this block beneath the bolster is at a different height. And actually that might be a little much for me. So maybe I have to switch it a little bit. I'm going to try the secondary dash. That might be a little better for me. All right. So, again, however you feel comfortable, I can take that position. That's much better. All right. I'll just be here for a few minutes. So just going to find be grabbing onto your heels here.
Okay, so very easily again, just kind of finding that space next to you to kind of lift yourself up if you're lying reclined. And easily kind of making your way back up to that kneeling position. Just maybe taking a second here and when you're ready, bring yourself forward into a tabletop if you want to even kind of tuck your toes for a second. You can very gentle. Little stretch in the bottom of the feet. All right. And so we finally made it to the last posture, our Shavasana. And usually my yin practices when I teach aren't very, the, the Shavasana is not very long. So we're going to stick to that rule. Um, so you're kind of finding your way to your back. And I'm actually going to use my chair for this last posture as well to give myself a little cushion and a little lift to my legs, almost like I'm doing legs up the walls. So I'm just kind of finding support here. So I just kind of, if this is what you want to do, perfect. If you don't, that's okay too. So just go ahead and take a couple moments to get yourself positioned however you like. And yeah, let's take a couple moments here at our Shavasana to relax and settle in. All right, so start to kind of deepen the breath here and bring some gentle movement into your body. Maybe toes and fingers start to wiggle. Roll the wrists and the ankles. And then you're going to take yourself over to your left side. So find your way there. If you're on a chair, maybe you're just kind of bringing the feet down first. And then just kind of finding that space on the left. It as a pillow. And just taking these last couple of moments to bring in the yin energy. And when you're ready, bringing yourself up to a comfortable seat. We'll leave our eyes closed or maybe they're at a soft gaze. Just sitting up nice and tall, filling your body up with breath and then exhaling it out. Let's go ahead and bring the hands to heart center. So thank you so much for sharing your energy, your practice with me. 
today, this morning. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and rest of your week. Let's go ahead and bring the thumb knuckles up to the third eye, center of the forehead. The divine light in me honors the divine. All right. Thanks again so much for watching this morning. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon.